This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Well, boom! New car sales came in stronger than anyone expected in the American market last month. Ward's Intelligence had forecasted that the SAR, or Seasonally Adjusted Annual Rate, could come in at $18 million. Instead, it came in at $18.5 million. In March, it was at $17.9 million, so the market is gaining strength. Despite low inventory and a chip shortage, car dealers sold 1.5 million new vehicles. And sales were up 111% compared to a year ago. But let's ignore the year-ago comparisons because that was in the middle of a pandemic. On a month-over-month basis, sales were down 5.5% compared to March. And that may sound confusing since the April SAR was up compared to March. And that's because March's sales came in higher than they normally do for that month. The only automakers that gained sales were Porsche, Volvo, Kia, Honda, Hyundai, and Volkswagen. Hyundai and Kia were helped out by the fact that they never canceled their chip orders last year, so production was largely unaffected. The automakers that dropped the most were Mitsubishi, Tesla, Nissan, and Jaguar Land Rover. Passenger cars accounted for 23% of sales, while trucks and SUVs accounted for 77%. Sales of electric cars fell 25% to just under 32,000 BEVs. And that's because Tesla's sales were down so much. But that usually happens at the beginning of each quarter. Tesla always sees a big sales surge at the end of each quarter, so we expect it to make it up by the end of June. More investment continues to go into fuel cells. BMW announced it's going to produce a small series of hydrogen-powered SUVs based on the current X5. They'll be called the iHydrogen Next and are scheduled to come out sometime next year. It features the same electric motor as the iX3, which produces 275 kilowatts or nearly 375 horsepower and is mounted on the rear axle. BMW didn't reveal the battery size or range, but the vehicle is equipped with two tanks that combine to hold 6 kilograms of hydrogen. That's a full kilogram more than the Toyota Mirai, which has a range of more than 400 miles. But, as most of us know, fuel cells will never catch on unless a lot more refueling stations are built, which is going to take time and money. That's why, like all companies investing in fuel cells, BMW is also calling on governments to help build out the infrastructure. There's no doubt vehicles are more complex than they used to be, so we need better, faster, and smarter tech. So the supplier ZF is launching a new middleware solution, which is an open software platform that's key function is to ease the communication between hardware and software. This simplifies integrating new hardware and software solutions into a vehicle and that cuts down on development time as well. This is good for things like autonomous systems because the data for the cameras, sensors, and LiDAR are combined into one location, which speeds up communication and improves safety. ZF says its middleware solution will be available in vehicles by 2024. Used car prices are at historic highs, but hold on to your hat, cause they're going even higher. The average price of a used car is now over 22 grand and they're setting all-time records. And you can thank the chip shortage for that. Inventory is so tight for new cars 
that the car rental companies can't get enough of them. So now they're buying used cars, something they have never, ever done before. And that is sending prices soaring. Prices for used cars at auction are now 50% higher than a year ago. Bloomberg reports that vacation and business travelers will be paying record rates to rent cars. They can run 100 bucks a day in Florida, $200 a day in Hawaii, and 600 bucks a day in Puerto Rico. Hyundai's luxury brand Genesis is making its way to Europe. Yeah, that's right. The company announced it will start selling its vehicles in the UK, Germany, and Switzerland this summer. The G80 and GV80 will be the first models available, followed by the G70 and GV70. Three battery electric models will also be introduced within its first year in Europe, including the electric G80 revealed last month. Genesis will sell its vehicles both online and at retail studios. We want to know what drives your testing. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. Mobility is becoming electric, connected, and autonomous, just like the manufacturing world. But we'll always be one thing, a reliable partner for our customers. Since its introduction in 2014, the SAE's Level of Driving Automation, or what's officially called SAE J3016, have become the industry standard for categorizing different automated systems. The levels range from no driving automation at level zero to full driving automation at level five. But the technology has evolved since then, so the SAE updated its levels to include new terms along with refinement and clarification to clear up some misconceptions. Some of the notable updates include more clarity on the difference between level three and level four, including the role of the fallback ready user, the possibility of some automated fallback at level three, and the possibility of some alerts to in-vehicle users at level four. Level one and level two are now referred to as, quote, driver support systems, while level three through five are called automated driving systems. And if you wanna check out all the changes, just click the link in the transcript or in the description box. As you all know, most vehicles are built in giant assembly plants that take years to build at a cost of hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars. But UK commercial EV startup Arrival is pioneering what it calls micro factories to manufacture its vehicles. It says it can set up a manufacturing site in a warehouse in just six months at a cost of 40 to 50 million dollars. Mike Abelson, the CEO of the company, joined us on Autoline After Hours and explained how its micro factories are different from traditional ones. The micro factories are very different inside. Uh, we don't use sheet metal stampings in the micro factory. All of our panels are uh, proprietary composite material. And that's important because it uses a low pressure process and it uses in mold color. So if you're familiar with a traditional assembly plant, we don't need a press shop and we don't need a paint shop. And, you know, our analogy to the body shop doesn't use any welding. It uses adhesives and mechanical fasteners. And then um, throughout the whole micro factory, um, as you all well know, a traditional assembly plan is built around an assembly line, which is essentially a serial process. Every vehicle goes through the same stations in the same order at the same speed, day after day, week after week. When I referenced software earlier and uh, on the videos that were on the screen, you saw these little wheeled robots rolling around. We use those robots, which we've developed uh, in arrival. We use those robots to carry parts as well as carry vehicles. And they don't follow a prescribed path. The cells are set up, the manufacturing cells are set up, and then the software controls what order the mobile robots go to which cells and which parts get delivered to which cells. So it basically gives us an infinitely flexible 
um, way to link the cells together, which gives us a lot of flexibility in uh, maximizing the utilization of all the machinery as well as flexibility in what we build in the micro factory. And speaking of Arrival, it just signed a deal with Uber to develop a purpose-built electric vehicle for Uber's drivers. Arrival will collaborate with the ride-hailing company's drivers to make sure the vehicle fits their needs as well as their passengers. Arrival plans to reveal the final design of the vehicle by the end of the year and is aiming to start producing it in the third quarter of 2023. But that brings us to the end of today's show. Thank you for watching. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey, Intrepid Control Systems, Over the Air Engineering, Boost Your Game, Scheffler, We Pioneer Motion, and by Magna.